AI in the enterprise is everything that people talk about right now. And when it comes to companies in the Microsoft ecosystem, the first thing that comes to mind is Microsoft Copilot. And let's be honest, Copilot and Ajax is what Microsoft likes to mention at least hundreds of times in every single keynote. But when it comes to AI in the Microsoft ecosystem, there is more than Copilot. Copilot is such a big project for enterprises, sometimes from deploying it, getting it secure, to getting it adopted, it can be quite the project. But we have quite a few more options to enable AI easily. Imagine if we could use AI with just a few clicks to extract metadata from documents, to make images or scan documents searchable or show up in your compliance uh, portals. Imagine if we could use AI to translate documents or make videos multilingual or simply to get better search results. Well, what if I tell you there is a tool or a suite of tool to make all of that possible? And if you're wondering where it is, well, it's in the center of Microsoft 365, which as we know, it's our beloved SharePoint because that is where all your content is. This is why I'm launching a new series called the Ultimate SharePoint Content AI Series, which has over 15 episodes that will show you how to use content AI on top of SharePoint. But because there's so many features, so many things to learn, I'm not doing this series alone. I'm actually joined by two amazing MVPs that have been on the channel before. Uh, we've done presentations and a lot of content together. Uh, first one is Drew Madelong. Uh, Drew, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Vlad, for having me as part of the series. So my name is Drew Madelong, a uh, longtime SharePoint consultant. I started working with SharePoint all the way back in 2007. And my world really comes from the IT pro, IT pro side. So as SharePoint content and I content AI grows, this has been a world that I've helped customers from all different sizes learn how to use this functionality and deploy it. And I'll be bringing some of that expertise into this series. Awesome. And the second one is a Gokun of Chifchi that you've been on the channel about 10 times now. So I'm sure almost everybody knows you, but uh, can you still introduce yourself? I'm not sure if I should get offended or if it's a good thing, but thank you that so everybody much. everybody knows you, <laughs> take it the right way. Thank you so much, Vlad. So, hey, everyone, uh, go Konozivsi from Belgium. I'm a Microsoft uh, MVP NRD, uh, helping Vlad with his series, videos, keynote recaps, and all the stuff that we do together. Uh, I've been mainly doing SharePoint in a different way as uh, Drew, because when I graduated from school, they just throwed me a mock of SharePoint 2010 and said, hey, this is your future, and I'm glad I did it, took the opportunity, and I've been doing SharePoint since, and that's the only thing I can do. Uh, SharePoint. So yeah, glad to be here with you. And the last thing is very important, author of four different books, including yeah. one, SharePoint Content AI. So I All feel right. like I got the right person for the job, bro, if you wrote a book on it. Well, oh. not only me, but we are like nine other MVPs working together on that book. And I'm pretty sure you're going to include that link into the... Yes, that link, that ebook is available for free, actually. And uh, if you want to read it, it will be in the description below. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, Gokan, I know that uh, I love the way I've watched your sessions before. I love the way you explain a bit of the added services in SharePoint. Yeah. So I'll let you uh, take it over. Sure. So um, when we talk about SharePoint, SharePoint Content AI, well, you have a lot of feature and artifacts within um, that SharePoint Content AI. Um, and today, I have to be honest, and I think you guys agree with me, the way on how Microsoft promotes it, tells it, it's a bit complex. Not everyone understands what it is, how you can use. Like you've been mentioning to me, like even documentation was not up to date uh, when you've been looking on the internet, right? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not easy. And that's the reason why uh, we have decided to create the three pillars. And, and be careful because... I, we, we mentioned this down, it's those are our personal views and they may not reflect on how Microsoft thinks, but this is what we think is the best way on describing SharePoint Content AI. It is not only AI, but you also have the solutions and also the advanced administration. And when you look on the content solutions and AI part as an example, how I define this is that the content solutions is where you consume 
the features and artifacts. And the content AI is where you build your experiences with content processing, OCR, image tagging, taxonomy tagging, and so on and so on. And the last part, which I think Drew is the most expert with, with you, is the advanced administration. And as you start to build all this content using content AI and these content solutions, you need to have a way to govern and manage them. So part of that is, is the SharePoint advanced administration functionality that goes through different things, or mainly around SharePoint advanced management, but there's also backup archive and other features that when you need to understand as an IT professional and SharePoint administrator, how to govern and manage your content AI, your your SharePoint content, because it's going to keep getting bigger. The content sprawl we have is continuously growing. And at some point, you got to get rid of it as well, which is what Sam helps you with. But in this uh, series, we're only going to be focusing on that middle yes. pillar in there, uh, which is SharePoint Content AI. And with SharePoint Content AI, this is going to be the area that this series dives deep into. So we're going to be talking about how Content AI works in SharePoint, each function, and how it supports different discoverability and actions to make your experience better. These features are going to make content management easier, but it's also going to help with Copilot. So Vlad talked about Copilot earlier. Vokan talked about Copilot. We can't talk about content AI and not talk about Copilot. The better your data is, the cleaner your data is, the more information you have as part of your in your data will improve the findability and searchability for that content. And SharePoint is the power behind it. Now, with SharePoint Content AI, we have had an evolution of this solution. We are now in a pay-as-you-go scenario. So what we have is no more licensing, no more user-based licensing. This is pay for what you need. If I want to do extraction, some of the things that Vlad talked about, you are going to be in a pay-as-you-go model that we'll go deep into further in this series. And that has an advantage because I know a lot of people have had trouble with the $30 per user per month, one-year commitment, not knowing exactly Am I going to get my money's worth? But with everything we talk about is you just pay for what you use. If you activate it and you don't use it, well, it's free. So, and even without spoiling it too much, there's even a few things just activating it, you'll get a bunch of free features. But we'll talk more about that in a bit. But uh, Drew, you did mention an evolution. And I think, Gokan, you created this beautiful slide that kind of shows a bit of the evolution of where we come from and where we are today. Absolutely. So we started like a long time ago with Project Cortex. And I remember when they launched it, it was a big shock to everyone because AI was not that common. And when people talked about SharePoint and AI, they got scared. Uh, and then we got into SharePoint, SharePoint Syntax. <clears throat> then we went to Microsoft Syntax, which I think was a big boom. Everyone wanted to use it. Everyone loved it. And for some reason, they just went to SharePoint Premium like last year. But if you go just on the next slide, well, you will see that actually we have discovered and after the discussion we had with Microsoft is that we don't really want to add the extra layer like premium or, or stuff like that. It's just part of SharePoint. It's SharePoint Content AI. It's, it's part of SharePoint. And what we know and see here is that we have two different views. And I don't, I, I think you guys agree with me. Like you have the Microsoft view. For them, it's all pay-as-you-go services. Yeah. For them, for the technical people that built the tools and the solutions, for them like M365 Backup, autofill columns, document translation, uh, OCR, it's all pay-as-you-go services. But this does not sell, right? Yeah, well, also, nobody really... It doesn't excite anybody when you tell it it's a pay-as-you-go service. Like, that, that kind of makes you want to run away from it yeah. rather than embrace it. And, and, and the customer view is actually worse than the Microsoft view because with all the naming change, well, they're lost. Like, they hear pay-as-you-go, SharePoint Advanced Management. Sam, you had a joke, like, with... Spam, right? Well, I was going to say, they, they couldn't name it SharePoint Premium Advanced Management. It would be spam that for them. So it's only Sam now. There you go. Like like uh, all those names and with, without even going into the, the product itself, it's a big question mark for the customers. And with this series, we hope to give a response to everyone who has that question. Like, what is SharePoint Content Layer? What is SharePoint Premium? What is Syntax? What is Cortex? All that will be um responded in, in this uh, series. 
And then part well, good thing to know with coming through this journey has been the solutions that we'll go through. Some of them have not changed that much since Cortex days. So the solutions, the, the rebranding might have happened or has happened and things have changed on the marketing side. But behind the scenes, technically, the functionality that SharePoint Content AI was built on and has been, has been built on for almost six years now has continuously grown. So the back end tech is consistent. If you're a SharePoint administrator, if you know how to work with columns, you know how to work with content types, if you worked with Syntex five years, four years ago, that functionality is still the same or similar and we'll go into each of those scenarios, but it's not a whole new scenario. It's not a new product. It's not a new solution. It's it's how we, it's the details of the technology that have been around yeah. and have continued to evolve. Well, I also think in a way to say it is we're finally solving problems that people had for over a decade in SharePoint. Like nobody has ever liked to add metadata on documents or on list items or to go in an image library and actually put manual tags. We're now letting AI do that boring job that added value to SharePoint, but nobody did it. Now we just let AI do the boring job and we just get to use it, which is fun. Uh, and like we said, I just want to talk about this point a little bit more. Enabling those features will make your Copilot experience even better. We've seen it time and time again. Your experience with M365 Copilot will only be as good as the data you have. If you have proper uh, tags on your documents, Copilot will be more confident in returning you the right information. If your images actually have tags on them, well, when you ask Copilot for an image in PowerPoint, it's not going to return a random image. It's actually going to understand your organizational stock picture library and return you an image that makes sense with your PowerPoint document that you're building. So all of those little features will make your experience in SharePoint even better. And if you have Copilot or you decide to have it in the future, it will help you make that experience next level as well. So make sure you follow Vlad Talks Tech on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. This way you get notified as soon as new episodes are out. We're going to be releasing uh, two of them a week until this series is all completed. So every week you're going to learn about a brand new feature. And uh, again, you'll have the playlist that appears right now on the screen. So uh, what are you waiting for? Click on the playlist and get started watching the next video. See you soon.